Today, we'll talk about how scoliosis develops, the most common reasons why it occurs, how it progresses, how the positions of different parts of the body change, and the most common types of scoliosis. In general, scoliosis never occurs without a change in the position of the pelvis and most often, it turns out that one side of the pelvis is higher and the other is lower. This happens because there is a, a different muscle tone on the right and left sides. On the side where the pelvis is higher, the muscles on that side become. So it's not just there for no reason. Something is holding it in place. The muscles are what hold it in place. These are the oblique abdominal muscles, the quadratus lumborum muscles, and the psoas muscle, which goes from the spine down to the thigh. On this side, these muscles, they don't. For some reason, they make this movement of the pelvis upward, and that's why this half of the pelvis ends up lower, and this half of the pelvis ends up higher. Very often, people can't figure out which of these two positions is correct. And they try either to lower this half of the pelvis here or to raise this half of the pelvis here. Since this half ended up lower here, provided that the person doesn't have a difference in leg length, which is most often the case, this leg kind of becomes longer. So what happens is not, this is not an anatomical shortening or lengthening of the leg but rather a consequence of different the pelvises at different levels, and accordingly, so are the legs. One will seem longer to the person, and the other shorter. That is, on the side where the pelvis is raised, this leg will seem shorter, and this one will seem longer, and that's why it will be more comfortable for the person to stand on this leg. And the other one will be a bit to the side, meaning he'll stick it out to the side, because everything here is hanging. It won't be comfortable for him to stand like this because he'll be a bit off balance. That's why more weight will be on the side where the hip muscles hold it up than on the side where they can't hold it. That's it. This position is the result of movement. So what you saw in the mirror when you approached, when you saw this crooked person, that's the result of move. This is the result of the fact that several thousand, tens of thousands of times, you do a certain movement every day, and then it stays with you. That's what you see in the mirror. And then there's no point in correcting yourself in front of the mirror. And then starting to do the same movement incorrectly again. The position of the pelvis itself is formed at the moment of a step, that is, when one side of the pelvis is higher and the other is lower, it's useless to train this muscle group separately. If you don't correct this movement in your step, three muscles must work. These are the quadratus lumborum, the lumbar muscle, and the oblique abdominal muscle. At the moment, when you swing your leg, when it moves from the back position to the front, that is, you can divide the leg into three positions during a step. In other words, when we walk, there are three positions. This leg is in the back, the leg is in the middle position, and the leg is in the front. And each of these positions should be combined with a certain position of the pelvis. It should be combined with the work of certain muscles. One of the difficult movements is the movement when the leg has to move from the back position to the front position. At this moment, the supporting leg is in the middle position. That is, you are standing on it. So, on the side where the muscles are working during the step, the following movement happens. Here, the leg was behind. At this moment, when the back foot rises onto the toes, these muscles are activated. They lift the pelvis up. There, they've lifted it and the leg moves forward. So 
because the pelvis is lifted, nothing prevents it from passing right here in the center. That means it can straighten freely right here. Here you go. You've taken a step. On the other hand, if the muscle doesn't have time to contract here, at the moment when you rise onto your toes, it doesn't activate and you get this kind of tilt to the side like this. And because the pelvis didn't rise, the leg kind of becomes too long to pass through the center right here. Because the pelvis didn't rise up, the leg can't pass through here like this. It should, you see, pass through freely. But if the pelvis is hanging, see, it can't do that. That's why it has to be lifted. And the leg should pass freely right here. But if this muscle group doesn't work, then this movement onto the toes doesn't lift the pelvis. It makes you tilt to the side like this over here. And in order to somehow move your leg, it doesn't go through the center. It goes through the side a little bit over here. And to keep your balance at this moment, either your hand makes this kind of movement so you don't fall or your head moves to the side like this so that this movement works out and that's how it works with every step so one leg moves forward while your head stays in the central position the whole time and the other leg moves out to the side and this movement repeats with every step so with every step this person will have the head will keep swaying from side to side all the time to one side then to the other there will be different step lengths because both legs will move forward on separate paths. And if this movement is repeated tens of thousands of times, it all gets fixed in a certain position. That is, the pelvis changes its position. It adjusts so that this crooked movement becomes comfortable to perform. It changes its position depending on how it moves. So, during movement, instead of this movement, you get this same type movement in one direction. This is a very common reason for the development of this kind of scoliosis. This can develop in children at the stage when they start crawling. That is, they haven't started walking yet, but scoliosis is already beginning to develop when they start sitting, standing, and crawling at the same time. But when they crawl, their muscles also work asymmetrically. On one side, the leg pulls up better, while on the other side, the leg doesn't pull up as well. So it can develop at this stage when the child crawls asymmetrically. It can also develop later, for example, if they get injured and some muscles stop working, while other muscles are constantly tense. This forms a certain posture, and then the upper part of the body adjusts to it. Whenever we move, we always try to keep our eye line parallel to the floor. This is what helps us maintain balance. No matter how much everything moves up and down or back and forth here, the level of the eyes will always remain more or less horizontal to the floor. If you start moving in a way that breaks this symmetry, you'll start to feel dizzy and experience everything that comes with losing your balance. So no matter how crooked everything is here, 